Hey, so what do you think? Oh, it's top class, and like, to be honest with you, like, when you're looking at it, you can't like, look, look at it and look at that. In this video, I'll show you how to paint a magical night scene in the middle of the daytime. Yeah, it looks pretty good. What do you think? I like it. I love alleys. Yeah, if I do Very the nice. cafe, you do the alley, we could do kind of the same angle. Yeah. The light's going to change maybe, but it's not bad right now. I don't think they're going to look alike at all, though. I'll be painting in a Koval watercolor sketchbook on my homemade sketch easel. I'll do this demo for you from life with the drawing and the painting all the way through to the finish, and I'll take some questions in the course of this video. Now what I want to do is paint this with the lights on inside the cafe, but um, to make it dark and violet, almost like twilight outside. To do that, I'm going to use these colors. White, bright yellow, bright orange, raw sienna, raw umber, and purple. Why don't we go ahead and take our first question. Hi James, uh, this is Anne from Parker, Colorado. I was struck by the contrast in warm and cool in your little painting of the cafe. And I was just curious, I see that you use the purple tones and the gold tones, just the, the opposite colors on the color wheel there. Do you approach a painting consciously planning that or were those just the colors you actively saw on location? Yes, Anne, once I decided to do this day into night idea, I looked at my palette and chose about six, five or six colors, including that ultramarine violet, which is a nice blue violet and will be a good complementary color to the yellows and oranges. Matt, why don't you go ahead? Hi James, can you explain your system for mixing colors on your palette? You lay your colors out across the top and then instead of taking two colors and, and applying them away from those colors across the top, you seem to mix right at those colors and start to blend them together. It seems to make sense, but I would just like to hear your thoughts on it. Thanks. Well, Matt, I'm not super systematic about how or where I mix colors. I try to mix them somewhere halfway between the two locations where I squeeze them out, I guess. And with watercolor or gouache, I'm very aware of how wet the mixture is, as well as what color it is. And here, to mix that yellow, to look like it's darker and cooler, should it be brown or should it be more greenish? I don't know, let's try something out and see if it looks right. If I quickly paint this brownish color over the violet color, maybe the violet color will influence the brown and make it cooler. Here's where a light touch helps. Regula, did you have a question? My question is quite straightforward. What is the secret of turning a day scene into a night scene? I'm amazed at how it reads like night and the warm light coming out of the window without it being too dark. Uh, best greetings from Switzerland. Well, thank you, Regula. What I'm doing is looking at the areas that are actually white in the scene, like the signs and the paper and the windows, and I'm keying those areas down to that blue-violet color. But the color of nighttime doesn't have to be blue-violet. It could be greenish-brown, like Alexander Kalam, who is a great Swiss landscape painter. The key is to stay a little ways away from black and to group your values together. So I'm not just ignoring what I'm looking at, I'm shifting what I'm looking at into those nighttime ranges. And this means building a model in your head, in your imagination, as you're painting from observation. How are you coming, Jeanette? Brilliant. The sky just lit up. And there's shadows, and there's ultramarine blue on the very top, in a streak. And what stage are you at with your picture? I just finished the pencil drawing, about an hour and a half. Oh, oops, sorry. It just spilled the water I into my palette. Oh, no. Hey. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, that looks good. Go away. I'm sorry. I'll leave you to your thing. Uh, Daniel, go ahead. Hello, Gurney. I just have one question. I'm curious how you managed to uh, evaluate the contrast less lighting. 
good enough while still drawing on white paper. Thank you. Well, Daniel, it's good to think of overcast lighting, as you say, contrastless. And it's kind of like having a large diffused white light source uh, overhead. So everything that's pointing down, like the bottom of that sign or underneath the windows, is darker. And anything facing up is lighter because it's catching more of that sky. For this painting, I don't want to outline everything, but I want to use a pencil and occasional touch of a pen to define some lines. What made you decide to change the lighting in this and make it the lovely night scene with the purples and blues and orange and even the hints of green? Stephen, what made me want to paint it was seeing it the night before. It looked so lonely the way it was lit from the outside like this. And I wanted to imagine how it would look if it was a cheerful place that invited you in. When I met the owners that came out to see us painting, they said the name Belly Dentro refers to how someone can be beautiful on the inside, no matter how they look on the outside. They used the example of a caterpillar which has a butterfly somehow locked inside it waiting to come out. To paint some of these structural lines requires a steady hand. I try to hold my breath and just go ahead at a steady speed. It's okay if it's not totally straight. If you need a straight line, bring a ruler, and I use rulers from time to time. The thing that takes the most concentration is the lettering, especially because in Ireland there's so many beautiful hand-painted signs. So I'm going to try to use the tip of a long-haired round brush and try to simulate this calligraphic lettering. Hey, Mr. Gurney. Um, I wanted to ask if you have any YouTube or channels that you would like to recommend that focuses on um, watercolor and gouache paintings. Yes, I'll list some of my favorite YouTube channels for watercolor and gouache down in the description. There are so many styles and personalities of painting in watercolor and presenting paintings. Watercolor is great to present on video because of the element of time. Speaking of channels, from the Paint with Pencil channel, here's a question from Brent. I was wondering what your habits for sketching outside of what you share on YouTube and social media. Do you sketch just for fun and don't really show it for, to anyone? How do you practice? Well, Brent, the sketchbooks that you see are what I do for fun and what I do for practice and my way of documenting my life. But I also keep little notebooks. And these notebooks I have in my back pocket all the time, mainly for writing down names and dates and titles, but I also use them, if I have nothing else, to sketch little caricatures or bizarre things to make the person next to me laugh. Um, but these aren't really uh, things I sh have shown before, but they're just very informal. Mostly they're full of quotes and notes. Hello, James. Thank you so much for being an inspiration, saying hi all the way from the Philippines. I'd just like to ask if you ever use zinc white in any of your pieces and whenever you go out and play, playing air painting. I use both zinc white and titanium white. Titanium white is better covering power, but zinc white seems to be better in tints. I'm using titanium white here. Hi, James. In real life, the location looks to be more gray and in your picture, it's purple, blue toned. How did you make the decision and what was your thought process in capturing the mood on your drawing? Hi, Young. I think the key to mood is to hold back on something, hold back on lighting, hold back on color, cover something up, soften something. I think by leaving out information and simplifying, we engage the viewer more. Hi, James. This is Kalb from Vancouver. Love your work. I'm curious as to what the weather was like when you were painting this in Ireland. I'm sure that you must have thought of that when you are picking out colors and wonder what that thought process would have been like. The main thing about weather this week has been no rain, which is great for watercolor. And I would like the clouds or the sun. I pack the same colors either way. So there's all these human stories going on. I'm tempted to put in a figure, but I'm reminded of Edward Hopper, who painted early Sunday morning, a row of shop fronts. Here's what the actual place looked like. 
And in this case, I just want to bring the viewer inside the building. I'll set this down here. Hi, I'm astonished looking at your blog, which I arrived at through a link to see that today, the date today says that you're in Dunleary. I, I live just down the road and how did I arrive at this link? Because I'm investigating painting with Cassine and I've been looking for references um, online. I do a lot of drawing in charcoal and wanted to combine the two or see how I, to combine the two and was looking for pointers, what type to buy and how to use it. So um, this is really quite amazing for me. Well, hi, Sue. I'm glad you found me through one of your mysterious links and I'm honored to be in your town. Anyway, um, as far as trying out casein and charcoal, I would just experiment with a separate swatch, try all kinds of things and see what works. Just now I'm seeing that wire that's going across the alleyway. I haven't painted, I haven't even seen it yet, much less painted it in. Okay, so what do you think? Oh, it's top class. I know, to be honest with you, right? when you're looking at it, you can't leave. Look, look at it and look at that. What do you look for when you look in a painting? What do you want uh, it to do? Listen, you just want it to, to talk you, don't you? Basically, you want it to bounce out at you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and look at that. You even have the edge of it. Perfectly look the way you have the edge of it and lame way and all that. Maybe you should have stuck a person at the corner. I was thinking of that. I might, but I want to keep it simple. Just keep to that one idea I started with. Hi James, this is Zaunji. Hi Zaunji. Um, I've seen you do paintings of airplanes from airport terminal gates. So I'm assuming that you've brought paints and other supplies with you in your carry-on luggage. And I'm planning on visiting Aaron Blaze for an art retreat in about a month. And I was wondering if you could give some tips for traveling with art supplies on airplanes with carry-on luggage. Thanks. Well, Zhangji, to get through TSA, of course, you have to have your water cups empty. You can fill them later. But the tubes are usually a half ounce, or even the big white tubes are two ounces, which is less than the individual tube size. So if you have six to ten colors, you're fine going through TSA. Say hi to Aaron Blaze for me. Now, the sky looks too white in this painting. I need it to look more like nighttime. So what I need to do is wet the whole surface of the sky and then bring in a light glaze, wet into wet, to bring it down to a light blue. So what I'm doing now with that big flat synthetic brush is carefully wetting the surface using just pure water and trying not to hit the painted areas too much because it will reactivate the paint. Then I can take some blue and I've got not only the ultramarine violet but also a little bit of ultramarine to make a very light wash. Gina, go ahead, one last question. Do you often decide on whether to do a vignette or other word, otherwise the soft edges around the painting first, um, or will you map this close in and not have those soft edges? Thanks. I don't know, it just happens naturally that I have a rough edge on the side, kind of a torn paper edge. But Jeanette's is different. She focused on that figure in the alleyway and built everything delicately around that. So I've got lots of links in the description to other resources. Check out my website where I've got lots of merch, other videos, and playlists. And you can subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you don't miss the next video.